people have often treated my gender like there's this truth behind it and I'm not telling it and they, they sort of re-roll the magic eight ball over and over when they keep getting answers that don't measure up. And they want to know what genitals I have and what sex I was assigned at birth and what my name used to be and they want the truth. But the truth is in all of the explaining why I was a man, I lost the plot. One day when I was asking to be called he, I realized I didn't really even think I was a man anymore because the absurdity of the struggle to be accepted had made gender feel more like a comedy than a fact. So I decided to retire from the gender binary altogether and change my pronoun to the gender neutral they. I'm out to dinner with my sweetheart. She's wearing a little black dress, a rhinestone bracelet. She looks beautiful. I'm in a shirt, tie, dress pants, jacket, and the waiter keeps mercilessly referring to both of us as ladies. Can I get you ladies the bill? Can I get you ladies some more coffee? Would you ladies, either of you ladies, like a dessert? And I, I'm obviously anything but a lady. And, and I realize that the English language is sadly devoid of names for people like me. And I try to cut the world some slack for this every day, all day, and the day after that, too. But the truth is, is that every time I'm misgendered like this, I am reminded that I do not fit, that uh, I am not this, and I am not that. I am not seen. I can't be recognized. I have no name. I am invisible. And a tiny little sliver of me disappears, just a tiny little sliver, razored most days from the surface of my skin, but some days straight off of my soul. Sometimes it's felt deep or seen so sharply in focus, other days just shrugged off. But still, all those slivers add up to something harder to pretend around. I can't control what people think about me, my body, and my gender. I can only ask for respect, and it's up to the individual to listen to me when I ask. In my gender retirement, I've given up putting that responsibility on myself. Instead, I try to be more devoted to listening to how other people want their identities to be respected. So many things get lost when we don't listen closely and try to give people what they need to feel seen. I like gender retirement. I imagine a pipe. It's like like a bubble pipe. <laughs> Any gendered public washroom. Happened downstairs actually tonight just before the uh, 15 minutes before the show. Any gendered public washroom, men's or women's, anywhere, anytime at all, every day of my life, for the rest of my life. Possible danger. If there was a special bathroom just for me, I would get bored. I'd get soft. I'd lose my spidey senses, my, my cat-like reflexes, <laughs> right? My, the eyes in my ba the back of my head would close over forever, and I would miss them. I, I tell myself this some days, but most days, I don't believe me. And sometimes, I gotta admit, it kind of exhausts me, all the head shaking and stumbling around the two-ring circus that is this gender binary, walking pronoun tight ropes and balancing between my safety and someone else's comfort? <laughs> I am a gender failure. You are free to call me trans and I am proud to lift this name up and hold it right there in the sun. And you would not be wrong, but it still feels like I'm borrowing this word from someone else, but it's not all the way mine. And my friend who lent it to me might need it back, or they might need it more than me. And really, these are all just words. And words are always imperfect. Words are just sounds we make with our mouths that point our minds to think of things that cannot be fully described in words anyway. I am a writer, so I know exactly where words fail us. And I know that a name is not a person. It is just what we have agreed to call them. 
And the thing about rarely being seen, the thing about being something else, something other, something not this box, not quite that box either, the thing about always being called words that bounce off of me or fall flaccid, flat at my feet, is what a heart balm it is when she looks right at me like she does. How she heals me with that sideways flicker in her eyes look that you just wait until I get you home look. Yeah? How her hands on me helped help me own all of this body again. Her hands on me, how she takes me, takes what she wants, and then gives it back to me when she is finished. Gives it back to me better somehow, more whole, and all the sweeter because it took so long for me to find myself, to truly live inside all of me. lot cooler outside of London they really like in the prairies it it's very artsy where I grew up I swear and then just remind you that you're late <laughs> glitter in my eyes glitter in my eyes it's a dangerous love. 